producer surplus is a very similar concept to consumer surplus. Okay, like the buyer, when there is a trade between two parties, the seller is made better off through that trade. Okay, the very fact that the seller is willing to give up an item in exchange for money tells us that that seller prefers the money, values the money more than the item that she sold off. Okay, now we refer to those as gains from trade, right? The amount by which the buyer and seller together are made better off are the gains from trade. Well, the seller's share of those gains from trade, economists call the producer surplus, which is just the, you know, the, the flip side of consumer surplus. And in most cases, producer surplus is the same as profit. If when you hear the, th the term producer surplus, you think profit, most of the time you're going to be on, uh, on solid ground. Okay, but it's not always equal to profit because there are cases where, uh, well, profit very specifically refers to the difference between the price you sell something for and what it costs you to produce it. Uh, and producer surplus, you, you can have producer surplus even if there was no cost of producing something, even if it was just given to you uh, as, a, uh, as a gift. Okay, so let's talk about how you can calculate that. Let's start by thinking about willingness to accept. So a, a, a seller's minimum willingness to accept, that's the lowest price at which she would be willing to sell an item. So this is, again, just the flip side of the idea of maximum willingness to pay. And the idea here is you can imagine sitting a seller down with an item that she might be willing to sell to you and you offer her some maybe very high price. So if it is a can of Coca-Cola, maybe you offer her $10 for that can of Coca-Cola. And then, of course, she'd probably say, yes, I'd be happy to sell at that price. And then you incrementally lower that price. Well, what about $9? Well, what about $8, $7, and so on? And eventually, you're going to find some price. Uh, you know, Maybe for a particular seller, it's $2.03. At that price, that's the last price at which she would be willing to sell to you. If you cut the price by one penny, she would rather keep the can and drink it herself than sell it to you and uh, and take your cash. Okay, so whatever that willingness to accept is, uh, whatever that price is, that is the the minimum willingness to accept. Now, if the seller is producing the item for sale then the willingness to accept is usually going to be equal to the production cost, okay? If, I, if I, it takes me, uh, let's say, $10 in resources and um, labor and the like to produce an item, then usually the lowest price you could get me to sell it to you for would be that, that $10, okay? Because if I sell for less than that, I'm going to uh, make negative profit, and if I do that consistently, I'm going to go out of business. So the production cost in an industrialized economy where most goods are being produced for sale, not produced for, uh, for consumption by the producer, uh, willingness to accept is typically equal to or very close to the cost of production. And that tells you that for an individual seller, producer surplus is just going to be the difference between the price that she's able to sell the unit for and what her minimum willingness to accept was, right? The, the difference between the price she's able to sell at and the lowest price that she would have uh, sold it for. So that tells you that producer surplus, or the formula for producer surplus is that producer surplus is equal to the price, P, minus her minimum willingness to accept, WTA, okay? Now that's on the individual level. And I'm not going to go through a, an example at the individual level because the, the notion of, of producer surplus as profit like this is pretty straightforward. I'm sure everybody is, uh, is comfortable with the idea that if it cost me $10 to produce a unit and I sell that, that unit for $15, my producer surplus was $5, right? It's, it's, just, that, it's just equal to my profit in that case. Uh, market surplus... Uh, sorry, market producer surplus, uh, that's equal to the area on the graph that is below the price line and above the supply curve. Remember when we were talking about consumer surplus, 
the market consumer surplus is all of the area that's above the price and below demand. But for market uh, producer surplus, it's everything below the price and above the supply curve. So let's go through a concrete example of that. 